Hello viewers and thanks for watching. Uh, this video is going to be about evolution versus creationism. I recommend that you watch this video in HD in order to read some text that will be on the screen. I've been hanging out on Google Plus a lot recently. Google Plus, if you don't know, uh, has this feature called Hangouts where you can join a video chat with all kinds of other people and discuss a topic of your choice. Some rooms have predefined topics and other rooms have an open discussion. Uh, I often join the religious discussion rooms because I like to hear the sorts of arguments that both religious folks and other atheists put forward to support their views. So the other day, I joined a religious discussion hangout and was immediately confronted by a religious person shouting down a rather polite but flustered agnostic atheist about evolution. He would go on and on about how there are no transitional fossils and how it's just a theory and has never been proven and so on and so forth. Rather than directly refuting his arguments, as I'm sure has been done without his willingness to listen before, I asked him what would convince him, essentially. So I said, what if we showed you a transitional form? What if we showed you hundreds of them? What if we showed you an example in the past 150 years of a speciation event, such as the ring salamanders in California? Uh, what would it take to convince you that evolution was correct? What do we need to provide? I was rather surprised by his semi-scientific request, which was that we would need to show him a prediction that you could make from evolution and prove that it was true, while also showing that a prediction made from creationism was false. That's a little bit higher than the standard of evidence we normally have, but I was up to the challenge. So I let him go back to shouting at my agnostic friend while I gave that request some thought, and eventually came up with the argument which I'll present to you here as I presented to him the other day. So I made this using my mad MS paint skills as a depiction of the Earth's crust and the various layers it consists of, which are associated with the various periods within the timeline. Obviously the deeper you go, the older the layer is, and what I mean by that is that you would never find a layer which was newer than the layer on top of it. That would be kind of silly. If that concept needs any further explanation, please leave a comment or read the comments and I'll have explained it. At the top right of this image, you can see a list of all the species that have ever existed on this geometric shape based planet. There's the red diamond, the pink pentagon, the green circle, and so on. Each of these represents a hypothetical species which we'll be discussing. Now, if God created the world and everything in it as the origin story goes, and if evolution is not accurate, then we can make several predictions. First off, since no layer of crust can be newer than the layer above it, you would expect that the lowest layer in the crust, or the lower you get in the crust, the more species you'll find fossils for. Since God created all of the species that ever existed all at once, at the beginning of creation, then the lowest layer of the Earth's crust should contain all of the fossils for all of the species that have ever existed. It would be very crowded. And a sub-point of that, these should also include modern creatures like elephants, horses, dogs, cats, and man, as well as earlier creatures like dinosaurs and mammoths. Everything that's ever existed. Also, the closer to the surface the layer of crust is, the fewer species should be found in it. Or at the very least, you should never find a new species in an upper layer that weren't in any of the lower layers. Here's a depiction of what this might look like. Note that if you're reading the text in this image, you should be reading from bottom to top rather than top to bottom, because the chronological order of the layers is bottom to top. You may also want to pause here to read the text on this image if you're interested. As you can see, in the beginning, the lowest layers of the Earth's crust, there are many species of animal. Some species die out over time, but no new species ever emerge because that would require evolution. There may be periods of equilibrium where no species die off, but still no new ones will be created. Just to drive this point home, you would never see species in the top layer, like the purple triangle, which was not also in the bottom layer and all other layers. Now since evolution is also one possible explanation for reality, let's make some predictions about the things that we would see if evolution were true and creationism were false. 
First off, the lowest layers of the Earth's crust would contain some older species, which are no longer around. And as you move up through the layers of crust, some species would disappear, and new ones would appear to take their place. In some layers, we'd also find more diversity than in others. Some species would show up in middle layers of the Earth's crust, but would show up neither in the top nor bottom layers. And you would definitely see new species appear in upper layers that weren't in lower ones. So here's a depiction of what you would see if evolution were true. Here we can see that the fossils of very old species are found in the lowest layers of the Earth's crust. We see that the species seemingly split off into subspecies, go extinct, change into new species, and so on. This is what we'd expect to see if evolution were true. Now I think we all know perfectly well which one of these two models fits our observation of reality more closely. The model which we would see if evolution were true is exactly what our paleontologists see in the layers of the Earth's crust. I rest my case. If you enjoy this video, please don't forget to rate, subscribe, and favorite. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments below as I do read every single comment. Thanks for watching.